How you doing? What's good? I'm good. How you feeling? I'm feeling good, and you? I'm doing great. God is good. All you know? the time. Just you know, I'm just busy working, and um, I'm trying to stay here. I ain't. It's a lot of stories, people dying and stuff like that. I'm, I'm going. I'm going to follow protocol and okay. And what we got to do, you know. Uh huh. I understand. So how you been? I'm good. I'm good. Everything is good. Just taking it easy, uh -huh. you know. Staying, trying to just you know, just yeah. keep my social distance <laughs> from people. Okay. Well, I want to say rest in peace to because I know you had a, somebody in the, in the family that that passed away like a week ago or something, right? Yes, yes, yes. Thank yeah. you. Thank yeah, I lost two family so members too. So many people passing away with all this, uh, you know, this COVID nineteen, but people not taking it serious. But they need to not wearing masks, gloves. It's really serious. You can die from it. You know. I'm a essential worker. People just really don't take it serious like they should. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I lost two family members myself, you know? Uh-huh. And, you know, one was in prison. He he had eight years. He, he spoke a coma on this June. Right when the corona thing hit, he died. And then my uncle died. So I'm like, wow, you know? Yeah, damn, yeah. Yeah. But, um, so ladies and gentlemen, we have Rhonda Fisher here with Bobby with Don Vito show. And she's the daughter of the Kingpin Guy Fisher, well-known man in Harlem, well-known man all over the world, you ask me. You know, and um, <laughs> there's no better person to tell his story than the daughter. You know? Exactly, exactly. You How was life as you growing up, you know, being the daughter of Guy Fisher? Well, pretty much, my life was pretty much normal because daddy always, you know, we always was in the hood. He never, um, we didn't act sophisticated like we was better than people. He always kept me grounded and always told me, don't never think that you're better than nobody because you're not. We're all the same. Just some people are more fortunate than others. And mm -hmm. you can't be blessed and not be a blessing to others. So. Wow. That's deep right there. You can't yeah, it's the truth, though. Huh? I said it's the truth, though. Yeah, you know? that's, a good, that's, that's a good way to put it, though. That was that was deep what he said right there. So, <laughs> when did you notice as a, as a as a young girl that you you know you had more than us? Well, to be honest with you, I really thought my father was a construction worker, and um. I just never, like I said, he always kept me grounded. I never, but once I got older, then I started finding out different things. But honestly, I never knew nothing. I thought he worked construction. I thought he did home improvement. Like, you know, like, because he was always fixing up stuff from, like, the clubs or different places that he had bought. So I really thought that he was in construction. He never was dressed fancy. He always was dressed regular clothes, jeans, sneakers. Only thing he had fancy was a car. And he never really wore jewelry like that unless he was going out. So. Okay. Okay. So, it's, it's known that um, Guy Fisher owned a Apollo at one time or had some. Yes, some he money. did. He owned the Apollo. Okay. Yes, he did. What year was that? That was like 1976, 1977. Mm. That's big. And that's when Apollo. Was was still in Apollo, but that's when a lot of the greats was coming through around that time too. Yeah, he really he saved it because it was um, they was it was messed up on the inside, and he went and he had his people go in there and refurbish it and fix it up because like how it is now. If it wasn't for him, none of it you know would be like it is right now because they really wanted to close it down. But he saved it. Being that it was, you know, in the that's all really people had to go to was the Apollo, like to see shows and stuff back in the days, you know, that was right there in Harlem, so everybody could go to it. Okay, so when we talk about like the Guy Fisher story, uh huh, um, is there a book out already or something like that, or is you working on it? Um, no, it is in a book out, but it is written, but it's not. It's not out yet, so right. it'll be soon. It'll be soon. Are you allowed to talk about any of it or no? No, not, I mean, you know, not really, but 
it all depends on what it is you want to ask me, and then I'll tell you whether I can help you. <laughs> so, I can. I, so as, a, as a young girl, did you see any, you know, of what he was doing growing up and stuff like that? Like, even you thought he, I know you thought he was a construction worker, but did you see, like, people coming around him? I mean, did him, you know, just the... Because he's famous, you know? My dad, it was always people around, but see, everybody that was around was family. You know, dad always been big on family. So, you know, it was a lot of people coming around. and But, it, like I said, it was all family. It was like, whoever was around, you was considered family. We didn't have no company at our house. And if you did come to our house, you was family to us. You know, mm -hmm. certain things that's just, you know, I still live by to this day on certain things that he tells me and, you know, and I respect that because he's, he's right. Not always, but, you know, <laughs> so, I mean, all, everybody's human. We're not always right all the time, but, you know, mm -hmm. but I listen, I listen because that's my fault. So did um, you always um, live in Harlem or you, you live, you live somewhere No, else? I live in I lived in Florida for 28 years, and I've been back in New York now for for three years, going on three years in October. So, you know, but it's okay. I'm glad to be back here in the city. Mm -hmm. I miss Florida, but, you know, New York is, is my home. So I'm glad to be home. So when you grew up as a little girl um, in the neighborhood, but I was going to say, um, did um you didn't feel like um like somebody might try to you know bother you or snatch you or something like that because your father was like the guy he was like you know like they try to do with some family and stuff like that. No, I never, I never felt like that because honestly, I always hung out with um with guys. I got a whole bunch of it's a lot of men in my family, even though you know they quiet. But I, I've never been worried about anybody doing anything to me. Plus, I got a lot of friends, so mm -hmm. you know, I'm not, I'm not scared. I mean, I don't have no reason to be scared because my father's a stand-up guy. It's not like he snitched, he did anything wrong. So I don't have no reason to look over my shoulder. I do whatever I want to do, go and come as I please. And if I have any problem, you know, I, I always have a solution. I'll just say that. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you do. So I said, so he was, so he, so he always was in Harlem until you moved to Florida. Just Florida. Yeah, always, always. The Bronx and Harlem, you know, because that's, that's where we, we're from, really, the Bronx Patterson Projects. And mm -hmm. so we always, we always, that's where we hung out, Patterson all the time in the Bronx. And then I would come downtown to my grandfather's house on the 123rd and Morningside. So I was, and, you know, or go see my cousins uptown. So I always been, you know, Bronx and Harlem. Mm -hmm. So, um, are you guys thinking about possibly doing like a documentary of guys? Something like that? Well, I, well, yeah, it's some possibles about a couple of movies. It's uh, negotiating right now just on certain things or whatever. But at the end of the day, um, Daddy wants to be hands-on, hands-on himself. So a lot of stuff, you know, we, we just holding off on so he could tell his own story. Who else could tell their own story better than him, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's what we waiting on. So... A lot of people saying, "Oh, he's home." I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just say it myself because 